everybody, it's Vicki with Dementia with Grace. How are y'all doing today? Today we're talking about the letter S in the ABCs of Dementia FAQs and we are talking about a subject that I talk about all the time because I get lots of questions about it and it is sundowning. It is not a diagnosis in and of itself. Um, it is something that happens to someone with dementia. Um, some people um, associate it only with, um, with, you know, getting your days and nights mixed up or something like that. It's a little bit more involved in that, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it, okay? All right. Sundowning happens about the time the sun goes down, which is how it got its moniker. Um, but it can happen any time from 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, all the way up to 10 or 11 o'clock at night. That's my experience, that it can happen like that. And what happens is, we, in your brain, let's, let's look at your brain like this, way deep down inside, right down in there, is your pineal gland. And your pineal gland is responsible for, your, is for, is responsible for um, making and regulating melatonin. That, that is the sleep, your sleep hormone. Um, and people, think about people with dementia. Um, are inside most of the time. They're not exposed to the sunshine. That pineal gland is not getting the same input, the same data that it would get if you were out working a job, if you were out taking care of your kids, if you were in and out of the house, if you were responsible for making, you know, um, all the routine decisions and <laughs> all things like that. I mean, when you are elderly and have dementia, usually you're in a home, um, in your own home or someone else's home or in a facility, and everything is kind of happening around you and you are not really you know participating in having to look at the clock and manage your time and manage your meals and all of those kind of things so you're not getting the input of sunshine and um, nighttime you're not getting those inputs those sensory inputs that you were getting at one time the other thing that happens is that you get really really tired during the day i want you to think about um, a computer with 15 browsers open um, and you've got all of this stuff in the background right everything's running in the background that's how our lives happen us with a intact brain we have um, we have all of our browsers open at one time our heart is beating our, I mean everything is happening we're, we, we know about what time we're supposed to be somewhere we know what we're supposed to wear we know if it's raining if we need to take an umbrella all of those things all of that is happening in the background. Somebody with dementia is, is having all of that happen in the foreground for them. They're having to constantly think, who am I? Who are you? Where am I? Where are you? Where are we supposed to be? What is next? Who, who comes next? Um, what are, you know, have we eaten breakfast? Is it breakfast? What is breakfast? I mean, oh, all of those things are happening. And so they are exhausted by the end of the day. And sometimes, you know, maybe they have taken a little bit of a nap, but that may get them, then they may wake up and think that it's morning time. And so that's going to get them agitated. All of these things, all of these sensory inputs are happening, but they're not getting the same sensory input that we are through daylight and dark. Um, I suggest having all of the lights up, 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 bright, bright, bright in the morning. Um, have all the windows open, have all the blinds open, have all the lights streaming in, um, all the lights and lamps on, just all this input of it's daytime, it's daylight. Um, any exercise that you can do in the mornings, I like doing it outside in the mornings, walking to the mailbox, walking to get the paper, um, you know, anything that you can do with your person outside and getting that good morning sun. Then in the afternoon, I like to bring the lights down a little bit um, and maybe turn the blinds at halfway so that the bright, bright sunshine is not coming in, but they're getting filtered sunlight. So their brain is getting the input of um, it's, you know, it's, it's later in the day. And then, of course, when it gets nighttime, all the blinds are closed, um, all the overhead lights are off, the lamps come on, the night lights, things like that, so that they then their brain has the input of it's nighttime. 
so that they can see the differentiation of the morning, afternoon, evening, so that their body gets that input that maybe they, they are not getting. A lot of times when I first come into a situation, the person maybe is sitting in the dark all day long, and they get no sensory input about, you know, the, the difference of the daytime and nighttime or even afternoon. They just get no, no input on that. And, and that makes a big difference to be able to change that um, so that they are getting that, that sensory input and the sundowning lessens. There are medicines that you can use in the afternoons. You know, some people like to, if they're, gonna, if they're going to have an antipsychotic or they're gonna have some, if they have hallucinations in the afternoon and they contribute back to sundowning, then they might wanna do an antipsychotic in the afternoon. Some doctors are that way, and I understand that, certainly if it's, it's something you haven't managed. But I encourage you, if you are having sundowning happening in your person, to get them exposed to bright, bright sunshine in the morning. Um, and then lower it as the day goes on. There are sun lamps um, that are inexpensive that you can buy, and I'll put, I'll put a link or two down below um, in the description from Amazon. Um, really, just like a floor lamp, and it, and it looks and functions just like a lamp, but it's a sunlight um, that, um, that gives that, that needed information to your pineal gland that, hey, it's morning, it's bright, it's winning to be awake. And then, you know, you, you turn it off, and then, hey, it's time to go to bed. So that's handy. Um, if you have any tricks or um, hacks that you have used in a person with sundowning to make that time of the day a little bit better, um, drop them down below. Sundowning usually happens in stage four and five. I forget to mention things like that, but people really are engaged in the stages and they like to know when things happen. In six and seven, um, they're usually not as active. Um, and you know they're just the sundowning just doesn't seem to be as much of an issue in six and definitely not in seven so it's usually a four or five phenomenon so okay I enjoy doing these I hope that y'all enjoy watching these I hope that it's it's given you some um, some good stuff um, let's see st T will be um, treatment. Um, treatment will be our letter T on Friday, and we will talk about behaviors versus medications and um, behavior management versus medications and the treatment of dementia, okay? All right, I'll talk to y'all soon. Y'all take care. Bye.